Capricorns and welcome to your horoscope for 2021 where Capricorn, oh my gosh, Saturn was in your sign for what felt like forever, but certainly in 2020, the last bit of maturity, the last bit of kind of crumbling some things that didn't need to be there and a full scale, you know, worldwide restructuring was certainly the theme of what was going on in 2020. Now that those things have been shaken loose here in 2021, what we find is we get to live in the new norm. So you literally get to take this newly minted, mature, spiritually aware version of yourself that comes after Saturn blows through your sign and it had been working on you for several years. So truly, as you show up in 2021, you're showing up as a different Capricorn. You are more mature. You've learned something else. You've learned something about resources. And I'm not even saying that it was easy the entire time. I think there was a lot of challenge that came with that Capricorn, but you made it. And here we are in 2021 and 2020, 2021. How about just 2021 where we get to actually do something with that now, which is words I know you like. Let's actually do something. And interestingly enough, We've got Saturn, who's going to be in Aquarius this year, lighting up your resource, your income house, your house of value. But I also think the value of self-esteem is huge this year. Clashing and squaring with Uranus, who is in Taurus, lighting up your fifth house space. Now, as these two come together on a global scale, this will be huge. And what's happening in the big wide world does affect us individually. So as these things come together and we look at them personally, that square is putting you under a lot of pressure, a lot of tension, and it is saying adjust. Adjust. Now, one thing I want to share with you is as these two are clashing against each other and creating this tension, don't push back against them. Don't resist the changes that are coming. It'll make you more fearful, more downfall. It's a bit more painful. Instead, innovate. These are fixed energies. They are grounded. They are stubborn. You're not going to just convince yourself or these areas of your chart to just do it different. So be as flexible and willing to adapt to change as is available to you between your second house and your fifth house. The second house, my income, my values, how I make money, uh, my passive income, all of those kinds of things, my self-esteem. The fifth house, my self-expression right? And, and you've got Uranus and Taurus in your fifth house. So you maybe have to express yourself in a way that you've never seen yourself do that. Maybe you have to express yourself differently around art, around your children, around taking a risk with something, your business, your babies, whatever it is, Capricorn, as these two push in, they're asking and squeezing you into change because it's actually going to be the next thing that you need in your evolution but i'm not saying that it's completely comfortable but you're going to be really shocked at what you see on the other side of that okay now also this year we've got mercury retrograding three different times but this time unlike 2019 and 2020 where we saw the retrogrades happening in a very watery body of energies the element ruling the retrograde this year is going to be air okay so as mercury communication thinking decision making as our planet that moves that way goes retrograde we're going to rethink re-edit revise reunion recreate re-strategize our minds the plan the air energies what do i think about this how do i connect with this do i need to go back and and re-network with these people in order to bring a project forward? Do I need to go back to, are there amends that I need to be making? Is there a conversation, a writing, something of the mind of your thinking that you get to go back to during those retrogrades in January, May, and September to review in that very airy energy, okay? May 13th, between, between May 13th and July 28th, we are going to see Jupiter stepping into the energy of Pisces. Now, Jupiter is expansive and brilliant and comfortable in the traditional ruler of Pisces, and this is going to land in your third house space. So I just have this sense of spiritual conversation or a softening expansion of conversation in this Piscean era energy. But also, it's like in the energy of Pisces, we bring things to a close or like a transition. So it's literally a transitioning of your mind. And Jupiter here is acting as this wonderful guardian angel to allow you to soften enough to transition something out. It's like you have a spiritual awakening of your thinking or even something, maybe you're writing something at this time and it's got this really 
magical, spiritual, creative touch about it. Now, at a very practical level, you could be doing some kind of writing or doing some kind of changing that is about specialized populations or meditation or something like that. But Jupiter's visit here to Pisces is nothing but helpful for you in your mental state, okay? It's almost, it truly, it's like it has to, to soften you a little bit to your own well-being around your thinking. Now, as we see Jupiter traveling the rest of the year around those times, he's going to be still in that energy of Aquarius. I just want to point that out. So it's literally like my mind's on my money. So you might be thinking about how do I expand my money? What's that, what's that next place of the horizon that I can go over that I can use to make money? Or where can I have some new ideas, ideals, and beliefs about my own self-esteem and about my value? I think that'll be a big piece of the story for you this year, Capricorn. Then we get to May 26th and we jump into the eclipse cycle which we're going to see happening in Gemini and Sagittarius. And then we get a one-off that is actually in the energy of Taurus. So May 26th, we're going to see an eclipse at five degrees of Sagittarius. We will also see the solar eclipse version of that at 12 degrees of Sagittarius, December 4th. Now, both of these are going to light up your 12th house space, the things that are hidden, rest, solace, um, transition, healing, faith, your day-to-day -day spiritual care lives in this 12th house as well. So I think that as we see these eclipses happening, this is the journey to the spiritual awakening. This is the journey to bringing a closure to behaviors, actions, and ideals that are not suiting you and moving you forward. These are ideals, actions, and attitudes that if you had tried to overcome them last year, you simply couldn't because Saturn wasn't done raising you, wasn't done raising that vibration. And now, now with these eclipses in this area, you're prepared to look back and say, all right, I'm ready to make some peace. I'm ready to have some healing. I'm ready to have some spiritual freedom. I'm ready to go on a spiritual retreat. I'm ready to plan my retreat. Whatever it is, you have six months in between these eclipse energies that are going to allow you to shift this particular area. And I will tell you too, if you can be of service to other people, if you know people have been hurting or they need help or you can make them smile that's going to go a long way for you this year capricorn especially as you're watching some things transition out of your life that are just not a part of your story anymore i can't wait to see what that is for you but the 12th house will definitely be helping you do that okay then when we get to june 10th we're going to see a solar eclipse at 19 degrees of gemini now this one's going to be in that sixth house space so the house of health and wellness and daily routines all of that good kind of stuff so on this particular eclipse journey, one of the things that I think happens is the moon is still emotional, but in the energy of Gemini, it's like I need to talk through my emotions. I need to talk through what's in my head. I need to network, maybe. I need to communicate in some way, shape, or form. I also think that this calls you to remember that your thoughts and what you've got going on inside your head actually translate into your body. So, and for some reason, I also think that this eclipse maybe um, it's somebody that you're you're networking with, but you end up helping them with their health routine in some way. So you're it's like you're being pushed into the, this position where in your daily life you're actually caring or networking somebody who is actually taking care of their own health as well. So maybe you're working together and it allows both of you a little bit of freedom by working together. But I do think that this eclipse as well is going to ask you to restructure your daily routine and your health to make sure it is primo, the best that it can be in this particular area. So look for shifts and changes in projects and daily routines as we get to June 10th. Now, November 19th is this kind of one-off eclipse that's happening in the energy of Taurus at 27 degrees. This will light up your fifth house space. So fifth house, I think joy, I think play, I think babies, conception. Some of you could be having a baby. It's an eclipse, you know, or something's happening with your baby or there's some kind of change in how the structure of something you've been babying needs to be adjusted going forward. Um, it puts you in a position to be very creative as well in this particular area. So what's your creative solutioning to things? What's the creative work that you're gonna be putting out into the world or that you're you're toying with and playing with as a hobby? And it allows you to, to just have that really creative flow. Now, I also think fifth house, true love, romance, this is where it blows in, you know, something nice is beginning. What can we maybe create here? It's fun. And in this particular energy of Taurus, 
I think the inclination could be to continue to try to work on a relationship that is actually outdated and this eclipse is trying to shake that loose from you because it's like Capricorn with the way that you've been raised and the way that that vibration has come up in this last year, this relationship or this possession or this whatever, very Taurus energy, hold on to it until we die energy is just not the right thing. So let's let that go. Let's adjust that, right? But you've also had a lot of 12th house work of healing here so if something's not right um, you may more intuitively be willing to pass it up or to make the adjustment there I will ask you just an off note at this eclipse ask yourself what risk am I willing to take how free do I want to be I think is a great question right there all right, as we get to December 19th, we are going to see Venus taking a retrograde in the energy of Capricorn into 2022. So she'll be retrograde for about six weeks. Now, the retrograde of the love and money planet in Capricorn is like, are my love and my relationships and my money, are they practical? Do they make sense? Can I achieve with them in this particular structure? It's in your sign. So it is also about you. Can you achieve with your love and your money in the particular arrangement and structure that you've got them in at that time and also my goodness Capricorn at the end of the year you got Venus retrograde in your sign calling you back home to you being like Capricorn you are attractive you are beautiful you are strong you are able to be a bringer of harmony and success let's go back through this year let's go back and look at what Capricorn has experienced these last couple years and remember the genuine depth and beauty that comes with Capricorn that comes with loving a Capricorn and letting a Capricorn be loved okay so use this retrograde well go back over you Go back over your self-esteem. Go back over your values. Go over the relationships in your life. Are they quality? Are they solid? Do they fit the value that you have? Are you showing up with good self-esteem in your relationships and in the world as we see you as well? Now, I will say too, if you own like your own company or something like that, you may need to go back over and look at, are you connected to the right relationships? Do you need to network? Does your branding look right? Venus may be definitely taking you back there. As we close this year down, December 29th, we see Jupiter officially moving back into the energy of Pisces for a 12-month stay over here. So Jupiter in Pisces here is going to light up that third house. This is a genuine spiritual shifting change to your thinking. It is like a, a thinking... Um, like a thinking rearrangement or that thinking transition. And remember, you got a preview, you got a taste of it. I think you got a taste of some healing and some expansion and some faith between May and July. So think back as you're here in December, what did you see at that time? Journal, take notes around that time because it's giving you the answer to what you're really going to be able to make that adjustment and benefit to because Jupiter is the biggest benefic in this particular third house area. So your communication, maybe you even had a legal situation going on and now it can come out in a way that is relatively peaceful. So I look forward to seeing what all of this looks like for you as you travel through 2021 Capricorn and please keep me posted in the comment section down below how this is manifesting for you okay like this video comment share subscribe oh it looks like somebody is going to be a kindergarten teacher if that's you becoming a kin kindergarten teacher this year please let me know like this video comment share subscribe I love you Capricorn have a great year I look forward to walking with you month by month and week by week okay Bye, Capricorn.